This is Tina Hacks. I'm going to be playing Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap for Switch. Any percent easy. So this was released in April of 2017. Uh, this is a remake of 1989's Wonder Boy 3 the Dragon's Trap by Westone Software. And for basically the first half of the run, there's a lot of really particular movement, killing uh, some enemies in particular ways, avoiding killing other enemies, and that's for the purpose of setting us up for a few drops that are going to help the run to go substantially faster. And really, the uh, the ability to do that, um, a lot of the credit has to go to a tasser by the name of uh, the 8-Bit Beast, who worked on the original of this game and uh, really thoroughly documented the way that RNG tends to work in it. So other than that, a um, little bit more tech um, that's already been shown off. So this game allows you to switch seamlessly uh, from these modern graphics to retro graphics and back again with uh, no penalty in terms of time. And when you're in modern graphics, there's this really cool cutscene that plays for every boss that you fight. And it's really great casually, and it's also really slow. So here we're taking a couple of hits, and now we're set up to get a, a drop of 13 coins. And we want to be at 15 by the, by the point where we leave this uh, burning castle behind, so gives us the fastest way to get out of here. So other than that, um, the movement in this game, you've got about a between half a second and a second of ramp up before you're at max speed, and after that you're at max speed. But that ramp up uh, gives us a lot of subtlety to be able to, to avoid enemies, to work with the way that the character is running. And that's going to come across a lot during this run. But other than that, I'm going to call out a few points where something particularly interesting is happening. But I'm going to do my best to let a lot of this amazing music just shine through. Because the, the amount of effort that went into remaking this game and turning it into something that is just utterly stunning uh, really shines through, I think. hitting the, uh, the jump button, largely because I read HCY's comment, which really made me sad. <laughs> You're all the worst. <laughs> oh my gosh, you are all the worst. I hate you all. No, the, the prime numbers thing. Well done. Well played. Well played. I was ignoring everybody up until that point, but all prime numbers are divisible by 27. Like, I don't even know where to start, like, peeling that particular onion. That's so fucking... Well, no, it's not an inside joke. It's just, it's well known that I, I uh, enjoy the topic of cryptography, and I enjoy things that are mathematically interesting, and prime numbers are definitely mathematically interesting. Um, so 27 itself is not a prime number. And on top of that, the, the point of a prime number is that it's not divisible by any other number evenly. So it's like... <laughs> At what point in commentary is loss memes?
Loss is so good. All right, Seraph, I hope that you have a wonderful evening. What time is it? Wow, it got late, and I've only got one commented run under my belt. All right, let's do one more. Uh, welcome back, Garrett. Um, somebody invoked lost memes, and now, now this chat is lost memes. Played. That, that's you're you're not you're not wrong. That is true. Play backwards is indeed elap. No, it isn't. Wait. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, God. I'm... I'm wiped. All right, let's go. I'm mad. <laughs> All right. What happens if I like move chat over here? Oh, that's better. I mean, I can't see chat anymore, but it's better. This is Tina Hacks. I'm going to be speedrunning Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap for Switch. I'm going to be speedrunning any percent easy. So this is a remake of 1989's Wonder Boy 3 The Dragon's Trap by Western Software. Uh, it was released in April of 2017 from Lizard Cube. And right out of the gate and for the first half of the run or so, there's a lot of really particular movement and uh, choosing how to kill enemies and which enemies to kill and at some points uh, which intentional damage to take uh, that is meant to set us up for uh, optimal RNG for some drops that we need and uh, some damage rolls that we're going to need as well. So in addition to that, um, there's a little bit of tech that just got shown off. So when when we're in modern graphics, uh, there's the, some visual cues that we use for where to jump, where to you know swing our sword or shoot fireballs if we're a, a lizard man. Uh, but on top of that, um, when we're in these modern graphics, there's this cutscene that plays before each boss, which is really stunning, looks great. Um, it's delightful casually. It's very, very slow. So, we skip that. And coming up, we need to have 15 gold uh, to purchase a weapon. And we're there. So, a lot of this manipulation is built on top of the work of Atasser, who goes by the 8-Bit Beast, uh, who worked on the original game and did a fantastically thorough job of reverse engineering the, the random number generator that's in use there. Um, Lizard Cube really painstakingly uh, implemented as much of the original game as they could, uh, while making some differences, uh, both from just uh, gameplay perspective and from the fact that this is now a, a 16 by 9 game, so things like enemy positioning had to be tweaked. But thankfully that gave us enough to build on to be able to start planning out and working through how we're going to approach uh, speedruns of this game, just with regard to whether or not we're going to be able to get the drops that we need and things along those lines. It turned a lot of these speedruns from basically rolling the dice to, uh, to more of an execution question, which 
certainly tends to be a more compelling speedrun overall. So, this being any percent, save and quit is allowed, which is way faster than walking back to town. And one bonus is that save and quit also resets the internal state of the game to something that, that we can keep track of, which helps us a lot when we're figuring out exactly which enemies we want to kill and how we want to kill them. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut up a little bit here and I'll call out some important points, but I want to let the uh, I want to let the music and the, the artwork that was done for this remake really shine through. Alright, so this is the second boss of the game, Mummy Dragon. Um, every other cycle here is going to be able to cause damage. And we want to pull Mummy, Mummy Dragon all the way to the left-hand side of the screen uh, before each of those cycles. And, and that skips that Poison Breath attack that we can uh, have otherwise. So this is RNG, and unfortunately I missed that cycle skip, but not too big of a deal. Yeah, not missing that cycle skip wouldn't have actually saved us any time. Alright, so we've become a mouse. Uh, each time that we beat a boss, we're going to, to find that we've been turned into something else. So that's going to become a theme. Mouse has two superpowers. Uh, first is that the mouse can run along checkered surfaces, um, run upside down, vertically, however the mouse really wants to. But the second superpower, I think, is a little bit more important. Um, the second superpower is that the mouse has a shield. And that's going to make it so that we have to do a little bit less dodging than we were doing with the, uh, the lizard. So here we're going to collect a little bit of money for an upcoming shopping trip. Right, 
coming up, we're going to take a little bit of intentional damage from a bat. Um, for another manipulation for a second boomerang. This one's tough. Okay, first. There we go. And there's our intentional damage. Uh, it's unfortunate. So a second boomerang definitely speeds up this run, but if we don't get it, it's not going to be the end of the world. That's a backup manipulation. That one's really hard to pull off, but we got there. Now we're on to the second dungeon in the game, and I am once again gonna just let the, the art and the music shine through here. That's a bummer. Not a big deal, especially since we got that extra potion, but... That room tends to be pretty tight. Um, doing those double hits is a relatively narrow frame window. the slowest boss in this game. Uh, we don't have a way to speed this one up. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit in the, the left-hand corner and jump over this boss as it swims underneath us and then hit it in its stupid head. Each of our hits can do between 3 and 8 damage, and so far our, our rolls have been about average. But the, the longest versus the fastest that this fight can go is, gosh, usually uh, a matter of losing about 45 seconds.
So this is the marathon route. Uh, the difference is that we have not saved and quit here. And we're going to pick up this key. And we're going to pick up a couple potions and an extra heart. That's the, the difference between the marathon route and the, uh, the world record route. World record, we definitely wouldn't grab that heart. Um, and we would have just saved and quit immediately upon becoming this fish. So we're a fish now. Uh, we can swim. That's our superpower. Seems like a pretty standard superpower for a fish, really. Uh, but we can swim. We have a shield and a sword, which I suppose makes us fairly exceptional as fish go. And we're coming up on a really, really large sequence break in this game, so I'm going to go ahead and start explaining it now. So this game um, re-implemented a bug uh, on purpose. Uh, they, they chose to keep it in uh, from the original. And what it was was that uh, when you're flying or swimming, it's very tempting. Or it would be if I didn't purchase all those uh, potions. Anyway. When you're either flying or swimming, you can, uh, that's a bummer, uh, you can get an armor drop from them. Um, but whenever you look left or right, uh, you gain just a little bit of height, which is fine. It's an understandable uh, mechanic. It makes movement pretty interesting and, uh, and nuanced. But... You also will never leave the swimming state unless you uh, have jumped out of the water. So those two things put together uh, leave us with a, a situation where basically uh, we can we can make this fish fly. So the original game ran at 30 frames per second, and this was really easy to do on a, a joystick. Uh, the new version, uh, this remake, runs at 60, and uh, if it weren't for the fact that all of the game pads that we have with our fancy modern systems have both an analog stick and a uh, D-pad, it would be extremely difficult to pull off. But the way that we pull it off is, uh, is we press right on the analog stick and we mash the down button. So, what happened there was we uh, got to a, an easter egg area that was put in by the devs of the new game, called an unknown. There are these challenge, uh, these challenge areas that, that were put in as an easter egg for people who really enjoy the game. Um, and an interesting thing about them is that they, they force you to transform into, for example, that was the bird's unknown. So it forced us to become the bird, even though we've never been the bird before, and it's not even unlocked. Uh, once we stop being the bird, we're not going to have access to it anymore. But that allows us to come here to uh, the beginning of the game, basically, and pick up the strongest sword in the game. So we've got relatively still early game equipment just in terms of how much defense we have and we have pretty i mean not even pretty late game we've got the best sword in the game and that combination is is going to be pretty all right So 
here we're going to become the mouse. Um, we're skipping an entire dungeon here. Uh, we were supposed to go back to that beach area with the fish. But we can take the mouse over here and, uh, and go through the strongest character in the game, uh, the lion. Uh, is supposed to, to go through this this particular area. And uh, so we're way weaker than we're supposed to be. Uh, our armor is nowhere near as good as it's supposed to be. So we're going to take a ton of damage if we get hit. And uh, yeah, so this is this is easily the, the scariest part of the game. Those bats don't one-shot us, but almost everything else does here. There we go. We're not going to use that as an excuse to go slow, though. So here we uh, purchase the last bit of equipment that we're going to buy in the game. It's still possible for us to get a, a drop in just a little bit, but we'll see what happens there. But an interesting thing about this sword that we just picked up is that it allows us to transform at will instead of having to go to those, uh, those uh, special areas where you fall onto a a platform that transforms you. It's not too big of a deal. I'm just gonna hop out and continue on our merry way. So there's two possible patterns in that room. One of them's pretty easy to get through, and the other one is uh, a little bit more annoying, unless you want to take it slow. So here we're going to pick up a potion and a heart that we don't need. Just for a little bit of safety. When I was talking earlier about that half second that we have, uh, where we're not yet moving at full speed, this stun lock is required, uh, or this stun lock requires that you make use of that more subtle movement mechanic uh, if you just jump at full speed towards the, uh, the samurai dragon you're gonna, you're gonna get hit and since we're underpowered and certainly under armored right now that's uh it's a pretty bad combination of things so with the the marathon safe Three hearts. We can withstand two hits from the samurai, but that's still not great. All right. So we are a bird now, again, which is great. Um, but 
But that means that uh, the game automatically just assumes that we got the lion uh, sometime previously uh, when it gives the bird to us. So we are now ready to go take on the last, last dungeon of the game. So this game was uh, kind of the, the old-school action-adventure style game, so it was uh, an expectation that you were just going to be searching high and low for things like this entrance to the, uh, the final dungeon. this dungeon there's a lot of mechanics that uh, you're expected to figure out. A lot of transforming back and forth, although technically transforming back and forth isn't required. Um, there are transformation rooms that uh, you can go through with the, the intended character for each part. the hardest spot in the game. And we're through. Now it's time for the final boss. Well, we can get trolled here just in terms of time and its initial spawn, but not too big of a concern. That, that double hit was nice. So time is going to be right when the cross hits the ground. All right. So that was Wonder Boy, the Dragon's Trap. Uh, yeah, it's a fun, 